Hello and welcome to this tutorial on acoustic impedance. Acoustic impedance is a quantity which is widely used, but in some situations poorly understood. This derives from the fact that there are multiple versions of acoustic impedance, and therefore various definitions, one for each version. There's some relevant background to this. One of the tutorials already on the Precision Acoustics website and on our YouTube channel is entitled The Acoustical Electrical Analogy. Within this video, we discuss mechanical and acoustical quantities. In mechanical quantities, we're worried about force and particle velocity as our primary variables. And therefore, the ratio of these two gives us the acoustic ohm. Within acoustical quantities, we're worried about pressure and particle velocity as our principal variables. And here, the impedance is expressed in rails. For the remainder of this video, we will not be discussing mechanical quantities. We'll only be looking at acoustical ones. So that gets rid of some alternative definitions. But now let's look at acoustic impedance. And we'll begin with looking at specific acoustic impedance. This is expressed as being the ratio of pressure to particle velocity. This is a time varying quantity and because pressure and particle velocity are both functions of the wave, this is a quantity which expresses behaviour of the wave itself at a given location and at a given time. It's a wave property. Here we see that specific acoustic impedance is a measure of how much pressure is needed to produce a given particle velocity. But because particle velocity is difficult to measure, specific acoustic impedance is equally difficult to determine. The other principal acoustic impedance is characteristic acoustic impedance. This is expressed as the product of speed of sound and density. Notice this is time invariant and is a property of the medium, not of the wave itself. And we have this uh, uh, definition here on the assumption that we are dealing with isotropic, homogeneous, non-attenuating media. We mentioned units briefly already, <clears throat> but let's look at the differences between specific wave-like and characteristic medium-like units. We start again with our two definition equations. And if we look at the units of the equation for the specific impedance, we see that it's formed by pascals divided by meters per second, which becomes kilograms per meter per second squared divided by meters per second. On the other side, for the characteristic impedance, we see that we have got kilograms per meter cubed multiplied by meters per second. But both of these quantities simplify to become kilograms per meter squared per second, which is the rail. Let's look at the influence of media and we'll begin by looking at gases. <clears throat> if we consider our specific impedance definition, we can see that when we have a gas, we need a very small pressure to be applied can result in a very large particle velocity. Particles have got very little constraining them. The mean free path between one particle and another is quite large and therefore a small applied force or pressure will give rise to a rapidly moving particle. However, the density of a gas is low and because the distance between adjacent particles is also low, waves take quite some time to propagate across a gas. So it has low wave speed. So regardless of which of the definitions that we look at, whether we're looking at specific or characteristic impedance, we can see that gases have got low acoustic impedances. We'll compare now with liquids, where the particles are much closer together. This requires a moderate pressure to be applied, and we only get a moderate particle velocity out rather than a large particle velocity as we would expect to see with a gas. And we note that the density of liquids is much greater than the density of gases, and that the wave speed of liquids is also greater, greater than the wave speed of gases. So as before, regardless of whether it's specific or characteristic impedance, 
we have a moderate acoustic impedance value for liquids. And the final situation is when we consider solids. Here, because the particles are bonded very closely one to another, we need to exert quite a large pressure in order to get particles to move. And when they do so, they've got quite small particle velocity because there were lots of restoring forces trying to bring a particle back to its equilibrium position. We also note that because of the close packing of particles within a solid, there's much higher density and waves can propagate much more rapidly across it. So we have a higher wave speed. So exactly as we've seen before, regardless of specific or characteristic impedance, we have a high acoustic impedance in solids. So in summary then, specific acoustic impedance is a time varying wave property. But due to the problems associated with determining particle velocity, this is hard to measure. Characteristic acoustic impedance is a property of the medium. It's easy to measure. And in isotropic, inhomogeneous, non-attenuating media, they have the same value. And therefore, in many situations, where we might require specific acoustic impedance, it's actually of greater practicality to use characteristic acoustic impedance under the assumptions listed below. We hope you found this tutorial interesting. If you have, please come back and find some more of the Precision Acoustics tutorial videos.